The Science of Anger Have you ever had one of those days where you're always irritated by simple things? You may even feel rage pulsing through your veins at the sight of something that once never bothered you. Maybe your favorite coffee shop discontinued the drink you liked so much, or perhaps the laundry gave you the wrong clothes again. We've all had moments of weakness. You may have been able to brush past some moments, but then there comes a moment where anger overpowers you and you lose all sense of reasoning and go a little too far. So, what causes us to act this way? Maybe it's something that's been building up for quite some time, or perhaps it's redirected anger. Regardless, the feeling of anger is never seen in a positive light, and rightfully so. Before diving into the science of anger, it is crucial to understand the causes behind the rage. The most common trigger associated with anger is a past traumatic experience that a person may have undergone. As trauma seeps into your mind and often seeks a permanent residence, any event occurring that resembles any stimuli you may have experienced during the trauma, your body is bound to trigger a feeling of anger. Additionally, a person might find themselves in the grip of this emotion if they feel underappreciated, overlooked, or at the receiving end of an injustice. Amongst many other triggers, a fascinating one is inherited tendencies. Though it might seem unbelievable that you share the things that make you angry with your parents, there is much scientific data to prove it. Anger is an emotion, like others, that brews from within. It begins in the amygdala, which are two almond-shaped structures situated in the brain. The amygdala can be thought of as an emergency siren that identifies potential threats to our well-being and sends signals so that we become wary and protect ourselves. The amygdala's role has evolved into such an efficient system that it makes us react even before our brains can compose a rational thought or judgment at the sight of potential danger. Essentially, if the aftermath of an anger episode has left you feeling guilty for overreacting, you may have the amygdala's efficiency to blame for it. But how does the amygdala go about performing its functions? The amygdala begins its role in inducing anger, starting from identifying potential threats in the environment. In that instance, it signals specific chemical molecules to be produced, making the body alert and wake its fight-or-flight response. The catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, cause the wave of high-voltage energy pulsating through your veins in moments of anger. The brain releases these two biomolecules, which alert the body to prepare for the worst-case scenario. As your body heats up like a ball of fire, you will also notice your heart rate and breathing rate accelerate and your blood pressure rise. The increased flow of blood causes your face to turn red and your focus becomes locked on the target. The brain quickly after releases adrenaline and noradrenaline, which causes the arousal to spike up. Now that you've experienced all classic signs of an anger episode, your body is ready to battle. The science of anger thus far makes it seem as though anger is an involuntary emotion and one that is bound to happen, but that can't be further from the truth. As our minds have evolved a sophisticated system to act in moments of fear and where the body feels threatened, our minds have also created a mechanism to control or manage anger. After moments of surrender to the demonic feeling of anger, at one point or another, a person searches for ways to train your body to handle anger better. Specific exercises or tips from therapy sessions have been found to be incredibly helpful for a lot of people. But have you ever wondered how these techniques go about making a more well-rounded human? It is at the brain's prefrontal cortex, situated behind the forehead, where you'll find your answers. The prefrontal cortex plays a vital role in developing one's personality by controlling decision-making and complex cognitive behavior. It also moderates your social behavior, so how you act in response to certain stimuli is partly overlooked by the prefrontal cortex. Since the prefrontal cortex handles judgment, it can act as a balancing force against the amygdala's drive to get you hyper and ready for a fistfight, which is why most anger management techniques are targeted towards learning to control the prefrontal cortex. In doing so, you will train your mind to consult the prefrontal cortex before the amygdala can rush you to make a decision. In some relaxation methods, the amygdala may also be targeted to decrease its activity and reduce arousal. 
Just as in the sight of a potential target, the mind gets you riled up, it eventually returns to its resting state. However, there are countless times that getting angry about something is far more comfortable than calming your body or training it to let go. This is because the arousal caused by the release of adrenaline lasts for a very long time, even after the potential threat is out of the line of sight. Then, the anger threshold is lowered after undergoing an episode, which only makes you vulnerable to feeling the heat again. Even minor inconveniences tend to bother a person when they're already angry. You may not be alone, as this too can be blamed on the body's slow cooling process. Have you ever wondered why you can't note down the exact details of how it all went down? Well, new memories are only formed when the arousal is maintained at a particular level. Since arousal increases during anger, a person cannot correctly concentrate and as a result, he doesn't exactly remember the details. Now that the science of anger is laid out before you, it's up to you to use this information wisely. You can identify your problem areas and work towards training your mind to overcome such problems or react in the least volatile way.